we think of these phones really as being kind of, we've described it as nearly naked. Um, and it's quite an interesting way of thinking about a phone and what Android does for it because when customers buy a G1, they absolutely tell us that some of the um, Google apps that are on board is something that's really valuable to them and it's familiar, uh, familiar services, uh, Google Mail, Maps and so on. But actually they really like the kind of nakedness of it because they can make their own device. They can really build it into what they want it to be. And I was actually at um, some focus groups last night for a few hours and it was fascinating just how much customers were saying, yeah, I downloaded that and then I deleted that because I didn't need it anymore and then I downloaded something else. So they were, the device was really evolving with how they wanted to use it and they were excited by the fact that there were new apps being posted up the whole time. So that idea of it being a constantly changeable device is really, really resonating with customers. Um, the second thing that I think is really interesting for us is um, just the, the capabilities of Android uh, and, and the G1 in particular for customers using their phones sociably to share with their mates. You've seen some of the clips of the current campaign, which hopefully a lot of you will have seen on TV, which has been fantastically received in the UK. Um, and our life sharing position really fits well with the idea that on devices like the G1, it's really easy to switch between texting, instant messaging, emailing, uh, being on a social network, um, and just being able to s uh, slickly move between all those different ways of communicating with different groups of friends. So customers now telling us, well, I know that my mum likes to text, so I text my mum, but my, I've got a friend in Australia, so I instant message them. And they find it really easy on this kind of device because they can just switch between different applications really comfortably. So a few of the trends, a really rich experience is what customers are saying. You know, the applications mean they can really delve into using something in a way they've never thought of a mobile, uh, a mobile could give them before. Obviously, the cloud, everyone's probably familiar in here with that, that term, the fact that different devices um, can access the same kind of information in different places and you just kind of take the right device. So customers very much saying that they're storing information online. I think one of the other exciting things for us is the global nature of Android and its potential. So um, we know that there are markets where they're going straight to mobile and mobile internet is really the lead for them, developing markets where they, that they don't have the same fixed infrastructure. From a developer's point of view and from an Android point of view, I think that's really exciting because it means that the next big application could come from literally anywhere around the world. And that means you've got the whole world's talent, potentially, to bring into the market. And I think that's something really exciting about the open nature of, of Android. I think it's very early days for location-based services, but I think we've gone through that phase of it being about, I can find out where the nearest coffee shop and cash point is, not really very exciting, to, OK, well, I know where my friends are, Okay, getting more interesting. But we don't quite know where that's going to go yet, but I think that's definitely an exciting area. Um, and only a mobile can really deliver that kind of experience. So that's really something new. So for us, and I think hopefully for Google as our partners with the launch of the G1, it was a natural step to then launch um, the T-Mobile G1 last year and to believe in Android because our whole philosophy very much had been Open is better. When you open things up, you might theoretically lose something in the short term because you might have had a fixed world where you were able to control things and manage the, uh, the revenue streams. But actually, open things up, more people get interested. There's more innovation. And what I think, just going back to basics, what does the internet teach us? Well, it teaches us that when it first opened up and you had the first kind of dot-com explosion, it was about people all over the world just trying things out. And by doing that, they came up with some fantastic ideas. And mobile network operators in themselves are not the only people with good ideas. So opening it up, and Android obviously reinforces that, is a fantastic opportunity to really start driving that innovation. 20% of um, new T-Mobile customers at the moment are choosing the G1. And our estimates show that at the moment it's um, hitting something like 70% of the iPhone sales in the UK. So they're different devices, but I think it really shows just how much that category is growing and just how successful the G1 has been over the last few months. The average G1 customer is, um, it, there is a male bias, which may not be a huge surprise. The average age is 32. Uh, they are likely to be living in Greater London and the South East. Um, they are also in a few key T-Mobile locations which are 
actually mainly around where our call centres are, so there's no surprise our own staff are using the device. And also um, the East Midlands particularly. Um, I'd love to give you some insights of why the East Midlands, but I don't know. But Nottingham and Leicester show particularly high for the G1. So, but London and the South East is unsurprisingly um, one of the first areas to pick up the device. Um, most of our customers had previously owned either a Nokia N95 or a T-Mobile Vario 2, for those that are familiar with that device, so a kind of smartphone device. Um, many of them joined from other networks specifically for the G1 and for, for the Android experience. Um, their data revenue is, is um, typically five times higher than, than our other active data customers, so they're, they're clearly active users of, of the, um, the services. Uh, and their average revenue per user is more than double that for our, our typical customers. So um, obviously commercially for T-Mobile, um, it's successful um, as well as um, what we wanted to do in terms of kind of shaping the market. We've got now coming up for four years of experience of customers using the web on their phone. So um, we know quite a lot about where people are using their, their internet and how they're using it. And I think where is always still quite an interesting one for me because if you look at the top places, um, the first one will not surprise anyone in the room probably, which is office, college and school. Lots of customers using it in their everyday life. The second one is public transport. Again, maybe not a huge surprise. The third one, though, is still in front of the TV, which surprises a lot of people, I think, because you think, well, if my laptop's over there, why wouldn't I just pick up my laptop or go to my desktop PC in the next room? But it's something about the very personal nature of a mobile um, and the immediate it tends to be by your side that means that people are very comfortable just looking things up as they think of it um, and using it at home on the settee. Um, the other one which everyone um, is always interested in is that 15% of our customers say they use it in the bathroom. So um, it obviously plays a role in those little private moments in people's lives uh, where they're checking whatever they check. <laughs> Probably best not to go into that. Talking about some of the capabilities of these kind of uh, devices and the Android platform, I think there's a, there's a few kind of things that we see coming through. There's probably much better experts in this room than, than me on, on what the trends are of where applications will go. But some of the things we see e are coming are um, definitely on-demand short entertainment media. So um, whether it be TV, video clips for mobile, YouTube is obviously built in as an application and is very successful on the G1. Um, we see some emerging kind of micro-local communities. So where we've had obviously social networking being a, a very widespread phenomenon, um, we see the, the location becoming more important. So customers choosing to be part of communities that are more rooted in real places, maybe their local area or places that they visit very often. Um, rich location and travel guides. So Wikitude is, a, is kind of an example of where that might be heading. Um, what I guess some people have described as geosocial tools, so tools to help to kind of meet up with people, find people, share with friends. Um, inevitably, things like dating on the move probably going to be popular in terms of the sites people visit. Local business networking hubs, um, so actually local businesses coming together and seeing the value of kind of developing communities. Um, live banking and payment services. Uh, banking, again, is another popular area we see our customers using on the web. Um, and probably the emergence of um, some retail stores on mobile. I think that retail experience on mobile has been relatively limited so far, probably because of the limits of the, the browsers and, and the experience on the small screen. And I think um, Android and, and applications give that opportunity for retailers to really start exploiting those capabilities for the mass market.